Okay, so for this problem, just draw the product, right? Um, with this compound and this reagent. So try it first, and then I'll explain it. Okay, so for this uh, reagent, let's analyze it. So for CH3ONA, NA is just a metal, so we can ignore it for now. Let's just look at CH3O minus. CH3O minus is a strong nucleophile and a strong base. That's just something you can memorize, or remember that a negative charge is willing to give up electrons, so therefore a strong nucleophile. So strong nucleophile is associated with SN2, strong base is associated with E2. SN2 is associated with primary carbons, E2 is associated with primary, secondary, and tertiary carbons. So with that being in mind, um, let's look at this. So we have to figure out what type of carbon this is. Because since Br is the leaving group, this is where it will attack. So this carbon is attached to a bromine, it's attached to a deuterium, which is a isotope of hydrogen, and it's also attached to hydrogen, and then one carbon. So that means that this is a primary carbon. Um, so now, since that's a primary carbon, uh, we just said that SN2 prefers primary carbons, Therefore, this reaction will undergo a SN2 reaction. Okay, Notice how here the D is a, a wedge and the hydrogen is a dash. And then you have your OCH3. This is called inversion because in SN2 reactions, um, wherever the, uh, the side of attack is, if there is a wedge or a dash, just remember to flip it. The, the thing on the dash will become the wedge and the thing on the wedge will become the dash. And that's just something to keep in mind whenever you do an SN2 reaction. But uh, remember that if, for example, if this remained the same site, but we had extra wedges and dashes here, those would not be affected. It's only where um, the SN2 reaction is happening. So if it's only happening here, don't worry about anything on the other side. So I hope that helped, and thanks for watching.